Our planet hosts millions of different species. All of these organisms compete for limited resources as they struggle to survive. Nature favors organisms that are best suited for their environment. Those are survive, reproduce, ensuring favorable traits are passed to the next generation. When humans control who reproduces, it's called selective breeding or artificial selection. By choosing who will produce the next generation, breeders select which traits will be passed down and which traits will be eliminated. Both natural and artificial selection rely on principles of inheritance for maintaining favorable traits from one generation to the next, and both produce the same outcome, a change over time. But there is an important difference between artificial and natural selection. One is goal-directed, and one isn't. People have a goal in mind when they select breeding individuals. They are trying to improve the appearance or performance of a species in a specific way. In nature, there is no goal and no agenda, other than survival. Dogs are the descendants of Eurasian gray wolves and were domesticated more than 15,000 years ago. Since then, dogs have been selectively bred for hunting, herding, and companionship. Today, there are hundreds of dog breeds, each different from the other in appearance and behavior. And because breeders don't necessarily select traits needed for survival, dogs and other domesticated species are usually less fit than their ancestors for living in the wild. Wild horses were domesticated as early as 6,000 years ago along trade routes between Europe and Asia. Many breeds have since been developed, each specialized for performing a useful task. Light, agile horses with a trainable disposition were bred for riding and transportation, and large, heavy horses were bred to pull a farmer's plow and wagon, or to hold the weight of an armored knight in warfare. And since the invention of the automobile and tractor, Breeders have primarily focused on producing athletic horses for racing and other sports. Humans have been keeping bees and collecting their honey for more than 4,000 years. Selective breeding has made the honey bee more gentle, more resistant to disease, and better at producing large quantities of high-quality honey. Most of our food comes from animals and plants that have been modified through selective breeding. Among other farm animals, such as chickens, sheep, and pigs, Cattles have been bred to improve meat quality and increase milk production. Cows were domesticated 8,000 years ago from a species of wild cattle called oryx. Modern cattle still prefer to live in herds, but are now significantly smaller in size, much less fierce, and have the ability to digest grass. Farmers have bred cultivated plants to increase quality, produce higher yields, and improve resistance to drought, disease, and insects. The wild cabbage plant has given rise to many different vegetables. Breeders selected flower characteristics to produce broccoli and cauliflower, and they selected for leaf and stem traits to produce cabbage, kale, Brussels sprouts, and kohlrabi. Modern corn looks little like its wild ancestor, teosinte, a grass that grows wild in Mexico and Central America. Bush-like teosinte plants lack a cob and produce relatively few seed kernels. Over, each seed is protected by a tough and thick outer shell. In contrast, modern corn has tall, narrow stalks that allow plants to grow close together in a field. Soft, exposed seed kernels are plentiful and grow on large, easy-to-harvest cobs. Selective breeding practices intrigued the young Charles Darwin. A popular hobby in 19th century England was pigeon keeping. Pigeons were bred to improve their speed, endurance, and homing instinct and beauty. Each of the hundreds of pigeon varieties could be traced back to one common ancestor, the wild rock pigeon. Darwin reasoned that if the process of artificial selection could produce such dramatic changes in a species over time, then the process of natural selection could change species as well. During a sea voyage that took him to the Galapagos Islands, Darwin observed different populations of wild finches. These birds have a variety of beak shapes. Some beaks were good at cracking hard shells, while others were best for catching insects or accessing food in a flower. Darwin concluded that a natural selection process had favored certain variations in beak shape to promote survival in different environments. The different finch populations all shared a common ancestor, but their beaks had diversified and changed over time. Darwin called this change evolution. Today, we know that when breeders select traits in dogs, pigeons, or corn, they are actually tinkering with the genes. 
In just a few thousand years, humans have introduced significant changes into many species through the process of artificial selection. In a similar manner, natural selection has generated millions of new and wonderful species throughout Earth's long history. You may have heard of GMOs on the news. GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organism. We have been genetically modifying the food we eat since people started farming. We select the best plants from our crop and breed them together to create higher yields the next year. Today, that process has been sped up by large research companies that specialize in genetic modification. These companies often sell trademarked seeds to farmers that will grow plants with a high yield to produce more food, sturdy stocks to withstand high winds, and are resistant to weed killers. They then sell the weed killer to the farmers too. There's another type of genetic modification that's currently happening today. Using the CRISPR program, scientists can now actually change the DNA at the base pair level. To do this, the program uses a special protein that can help cut the double strands of DNA. Once the DNA has been cut, the scientists can then insert specially programmed DNA into those holes. Scientists are currently using this CRISPR program to help find new ways to combat or cure major diseases such as cancer. While artificial selection isn't always used for the benefit of others, generally artificial selection has helped humans to not go extinct by curing diseases and helping us to have more food.